Hey guys, Max here and it is Saturday, the week is over. So how did the markets do? Well for yesterday itself, not brilliantly, but not awfully either. As you can see, tech in particular did quite poorly with Nvidia and Tesla dropping the most for the day, the more traditional side of the markets financials, healthcare, consumer staples and the like actually did quite well and rose for the most part. So on the whole, the S&P 500 only fell by 0.3% while the Nasdaq did far worse and fell by 1.4%. As for the markets in Europe, they did pretty well on the whole. The FTSE 100 and the stock 600 rose by about 1.5% each for the day. Apparently, as investors took advantage of beaten down valuations, that is according to Bloomberg, which really just means they don't know why you European stocks rose and frankly I don't really know why either. As for the performance of stocks for the week, it was pretty much the same story as yesterday itself, just on a slightly larger scale. Tech did pretty poorly, as you can see, Nvidia fell a very significant 13% this week alone and other giants like Microsoft and Google were down over 4% and Amazon and Tesla down over 5%, so yeah, tech really did quite poorly for the week. Healthcare though did really well, as did consumer staples, and energy performed pretty well too. Some of the fears causing tech to fall was of course the re-rising of COVID in China, which has also caused healthcare to see a small boom, as it seems pretty clear at this point that COVID is never really going to disappear. It will continue to mutate and spread, and certain countries and economies will get on with life and learn to live with it, while some others, notably China, will not. They have made it abundantly clear that they intend to continue trying to pursue a zero COVID strategy. The big scary thing about this COVID resurgence in China though is surrounding the fact that just recently 20 million people have been placed into a really strict lockdown in Shanghai, bringing one of the biggest, most valuable, most important cities in the world to a screeching halt. Now, the literal numbers for China's COVID cases per day coming out of Shanghai are about 21,000 daily new cases at the moment. But these numbers are obviously to be treated with a lot of skepticism, being that they come from the Communist Party. Back in 2020, I need not remind you, China imprisoned and murdered scientists who tried to alert the world to COVID and then went on to claim that in its incredibly densely populated country of one and a half billion people, they never saw more than a thousand cases a day. This was obviously all nonsense back then, so the question has to be asked, why is the CCP suddenly announcing so many cases over the last few weeks? Now, this isn't a simple question, and it probably doesn't have a simple answer either. My bet is that the sentiment on the ground in China is actually pretty poor right now. These lockdowns are notoriously brutal from the CCP. There is a lot of violence involved when it comes to locking down these cities and forcing people into quarantine camps. There is plenty of video around about to see. I saw a video yesterday where a dying woman was refused access to a hospital because of their COVID rules. Now, I think most Chinese people are probably getting a little bit uneasy about all this. And so in order for the CCP to justify their brutal actions, they have to instill fear in the population to convince them that the lockdowns and the quarantines are worth it and justified. Now again, it is worth noting that I don't have any data to support this, it's far too early for that kind of thing, and I could be wildly wrong here, but something has to have changed for the CCP to be finally publishing cases for once, and that's what I think is probably going on here. Now regarding Russia's war against Ukraine, again, it hadn't really stopped as markets had been hoping over the last month. Just over four weeks ago, negotiations were being priced by the markets as though they would be successful, but they haven't been successful at all, and it doesn't look like they're going to be either. Ukraine is understandably confident in its ability to continue to fend off Russia's attacks. Russia is determined to at least get something out of this already extremely costly invasion, so it looks like a showdown is going to happen in the Donbass and the southern part of the country soon enough, and that will probably shake markets further. Yesterday, for instance, we saw around 50 civilians killed in a rocket strike near a train station by Russia, and this sort of thing is going to continue to happen. We got news of another mass grave of civilians being found in a town that was under the control of the Russians for the best part of a month, and every time something like this emerges or it develops, the pressure on the West to act and step up sanctions increases, and that isn't great for markets. Right now, the focus is mostly on energy, as it has been for a while now, with coal imports from Russia to be banned across the EU, but in six months' time. 
Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia are all unpleasantly aware of how dangerous Russian aggression can be, so they have committed to cutting out all Russian energy, but the really important roadblock stopping major progress across the EU as a whole is of course Germany. It is worth noting though that in my opinion, that is based off the actual polling of German nationals and citizens at the moment, they are showing a willingness to cut natural gas imports from Russia at their own expense in order to stop funding Russia's war. But the German government does not agree and is siding with business lobbyists and unions who are staunchly opposed to restricting energy imports as it would have a massive impact on German industry. Now the other big thing that shook the markets over the last week was once more bonds and their rising yields. Yesterday for what seems like the 10th week in a row we saw yields reach a new 3 year high. The US 10 year treasury yield went up another 5 basis points and it now sits at 2.7%. It was very recently, only a couple of months ago, that yield was down below 2%, so this change has been very quick. We're seeing a similar, albeit slightly slower move in other countries' bonds yields as well, with the German and British 10-year yields rising consistently over the last few months, and a couple more basis points yesterday itself. Of course, the yield curve inverted earlier in the week, which is a big recession indicator, as we've mentioned before, but it's been coming for months now and really just been a matter of when, not if, so this shouldn't really surprise too many investors itself. It's also worth noting that there are plenty of people who disagree with the yield curve as a recession indicator, which is fair enough, but in my opinion, I think the evidence speaks for itself, and more often than not, by a large margin as well, a yield curve inversion does precede a recession. Now oil prices for the week saw quite a lot of downwards movement with I think three of the last four days seeing consecutive decreases but yesterday that was reversed with a slight increase in oil prices. Still though as far as the week goes oil prices have been down. WTI crude oil rose 2% and it's now sitting at about $98 a barrel and Brent crude is sitting just a touch higher at $102 a barrel. Prices have eased in general thanks to two separate factors. The release of a fair bit of oil from strategic reserves from around the world, but namely from the US and a couple of institutions, and the assumed lesser demand of oil coming from China as lockdowns continue to damage the industrial production and the economy of China itself. Now this reduced demand hasn't actually really started yet, or at least it hasn't impacted China's oil imports yet, but it is widely expected that it will within a couple of months or so, so speculators are moving oil. Now gold is chugging along as it has been throughout 2022, so far it rose slightly yesterday about half a percent, and it now sits at $1950 an ounce. Crypto has had a tough week following in the footsteps of risk on tech companies as we do expect these days. Bitcoin and Ethereum fell slightly a couple of percent each yesterday and they now sit at around $42,000 and $3,200 each. The altcoin market moved a little bit more with most falling something like 5% each. Again, this is just more credence to the idea that crypto is a risk on asset that moves in the same fashion as other risk on assets, something that has been pretty evident for a while now. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. If you want more content like this, then check out our Patreon and join our community of investors. You get access to our Discord, loads of exclusive content like insight into my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. There's a link in the description to masterworks.io, a site that allows you to buy fractional shares of art from world famous artists like Banksy, which can be a great way to diversify your portfolio with non-market correlated assets. It's completely free to sign up, so if that sounds interesting, then make sure to check it out. There's also a link in the description to BlockFi, which will give you up to $250 in free Bitcoin when you use it. You can also get 9% interest on stable coins like USDC, which is a far higher rate than you get from any savings account these days. Thank you all for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.